With rumours of Watch Dogs 3 being announced at E3 being strong and what with E3 being around the corner, I thought what better time than now to talk about what I would like to see in this game whenever it comes out, even if it doesn't happen to be announced at E3 this year. So in this video, I'm going to go over five things that I want in Watch Dogs 3. Now, in the comment section, let me know what you want to see in Watch Dogs 3. You can list as much or as little as you want, but this video will be my own list based on my opinion. But if you're ready, we'll get cracking. If there's one thing we should probably get out of the way while the video is still boring, it's the driving. Watch Dogs and Watch Dogs 2 don't have the best driving mechanics that I've ever seen in a game of this style. Granted I do drive like a maniac, but I feel as if I'd have a hard time if I didn't. The mechanics just don't feel very pleasant if you understand what I mean. In Watch Dogs the driving is quite tough to get your head around, making for a lot of rage moments during chases and the like. Unfortunately though Watch Dogs 2 sought to improve this, it didn't really change very much. So whereas driving in Watch Dogs was quite heavy and once you actually got moving you crashed into something, in Watch Dogs 2 the car just shoots off and you hit something. In reality you want a well balanced driving system, now I'm not saying all the cars in the game need to be easy to drive, that would just be stupid and it wouldn't represent reality very well as we all know. Some cars are just very difficult to drive. What I am trying to say however is that the driving needs to be more well balanced. If they manage to do this it will make for a much smoother experience. In reality it should be possible to drive just like anyone else in the world would, however I understand that a lot of games with driving in them tend to make it so that you can only drive like a maniac, and to be honest fair enough. Anyways let's move on. Another thing Watch Dogs 3 needs is a return to the gritty theme, at least of sorts. Now Watch Dogs did set up a gritty scene, and I wasn't mad at it, despite Aiden Pierce literally massacring an entire city's criminal underworld in the name of his dead niece, which might have been one step too far, but fair enough. But then again, where is the line for that where that suddenly becomes acceptable? I guess it just doesn't exist. Despite Watch Dogs being somewhat flawed, by comparison to Watch Dogs 2, the gritty theme really did captivate how I imagined Watch Dogs better. So in my mind, if Watch Dogs is going to reach the pinnacle of how it should be and what it can be, I'd imagine this is probably the better way to do it as far as the theme of the game is concerned. I think Watch Dogs suits the darker tone better, and if Watch Dogs 3 happens to be going to London, as rumours are suggesting, it'll be the perfect scene for that to be realised, as London isn't exactly a city that you'd associate with sunshine and rainbows, or sunshine at all to be honest, or even rainbows. A good day in London consists of torrential downpour and a pigeon shitting on your head. But Anyways, I've made my point now, let's move on. Another thing Watch Dogs 3 will need is more variety in enjoyable side content. Whenever we talk about Ubisoft games, not neglecting the side content needs to be highlighted in big, bold, capital letters with a thick underline and arrows pointing to it. Though they haven't been so bad in recent years, in some of their games, Ubisoft find themselves prone to filling the world with boring side content in which you do the same feather rubbish over and over again until you eventually grow bored and shut the game off. Watch Dogs 3 could have a plethora of interesting side content, such as side missions complete with set pieces and unique objectives. Fun little filler things can be there of course, such as something akin to the Driver San Francisco app in 2, which is pretty fun. But attacking gang hideouts and things, for example, get pretty boring after the first couple of times that you do it, and Ubisoft seem to put those kinds of objectives in every single open world game that they make, along with random supply runs and other unoriginal ideas. Ideally I'd like to see side missions, not side quests, but side missions because I don't want this game to be an RPG for the love of god, in which you do stuff unique to that mission complete with set pieces and things like I mentioned before, as I'd much prefer to play something well structured as opposed to some open ended nonsense in which they don't really have to script anything and that's why they did it, because though a lot of games do this to give the player more freedom to do things, sometimes when it's not done properly it comes across as using it as an excuse to be lazy when making the game, and it's instances like that where you get flat experiences like I'd associate with games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So fingers crossed Watch Dogs 3 has some solid side content, and in a game about hacking I'd imagine that the possibilities are endless. Regardless, let's move on.
Now Ubisoft have an annoying habit of getting really invested in one style of making a game and then making all of their games in that style. And at the moment that kind of style is the RPG light style as they call it, whereas I like to just call it bad RPG. And in these games one of the things that you can choose is the sex of your character and in a lot of their games you can customise your character on top of this. I don't want any of that, I'd prefer to have a pre-established character set up by the developers to tell a very intimate story which you can't do if you're changing the character's sex, for example. I don't care about the character's ethnicity or gender or whatever. As long as the story is good, it doesn't matter. But in order to feel a personal connection with a character and to really enjoy that character, that character has to be a character and it cannot just be your avatar in a game. Like, for example, in games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Far Cry, Ghost Recon, Wildlands or whatever, that's exactly what it is. Not really a character, but a vessel in which you explore the game in. And you're probably wondering, how does choosing a character's sex restrict you from being able to feel connected to that character? Well, if we look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey, for example, it's two actors literally having to emulate each other to make sure that they deliver the exact same performance to the point where both of the performances are just stale. As they both perform this in a recording booth, not even in mocap which meant that they were just sat there on their own reading lines from a piece of paper. If the character is preset male or preset female and built off of that, I really don't care which, then you can use mocap, you can actually put them in that scenario, you can make them act with other actors, and you can create a better performance. I also think that dialogue options, for example, won't suit Watch Dogs 3. It needs to be a handcrafted story, like it has been in the previous two entries, regardless of whether it was delivered well. That is a type of game that suits Watch Dogs. But anyways, that's enough of this nonsense. Let's move on to our final point. My final point is I want Watch Dogs 3 to feel like a game more than a political statement. Watch Dogs 2 was a very liberal political statement of a game, in my opinion. Its characters, how they carry themselves and all that, which is fine in itself, but it was very heavily overdone to the point where it hindered the enjoyment I could have in the game. Because though I don't mind Marcus all too much, the overall cast of characters inevitably got on my nerves, and I felt like this game just wasn't for me as a result. Now, I'm not very political, I can get over it, but if I felt like this was a statement, I can only imagine how people who outright disagree with the politics of the game would think. Maybe I'm looking a little bit too far into it, but Watch Dogs 3 doesn't need to go down this route of politically correct up to the eyeballs. But yeah, keep petting dogs in there, that's fine. <laughs> I'd rather experience a more realistic represented world, whether the game is actually set in London as we know beyond most doubts that it probably will be or somewhere else. I like to see the contrast of society making a more alive and realistic feeling world. And when that's the base of the game, I think it can appeal to more players as a fun experience and leave political statements to things that need to be that way. That being said, a lot of people assume some things that aren't political statements actually are when in reality they're not. For example, if the protagonist turns out to be female, in a lot of people's eyes that's already a political statement. I personally don't see how. All I want is a good character and a good story that isn't about the world's politics, then I'll be alright. Anyways, there we are, five things that I want in, or more accurately, for Watch Dogs 3. Whether or not my wants will be realised in the game, I really don't know, as they're only my desires. Let me know what you think down in the comments section, and of course, if the game's going to be announced at E3 this year, then it's probably too late to change some of these things. As for what actually happens to be in Watch Dogs 3, I don't know, I guess we'll have to wait and see if they decide to announce it this year. If not, then who knows, maybe in a couple years time they'll announce it, and it will be some incredible game that can really give this franchise the lift off it so desperately needs. That being said, at the very least, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, and I will see you all very soon with another video at some point.